Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at Google's Nexus Player and the optional gamepad. These products are produced by ASUS and are powered by Android TV, an operating system that combines the features of Chromecast but adds a remote controller with a conventional on-screen interface. Now, it's very similar to conventional media streaming boxes like the Apple TV, Roku Player, and Amazon Fire TV, and is priced similarly at $99 for the player alone and $39 for the game controller. The player is actually strikingly similar to the Amazon Fire TV with a voice-operated remote controller and optional gaming pad for use with Android games. The difference, however, is that the player is geared toward Google Media and Content as opposed to Amazon's content. Now, taking a look at the specs, we have a 1.8 GHz quad-core Intel Atom CPU, a Power VR Series 6 graphics engine, and 1 GB of RAM with 8 GB of internal storage. The player also features dual MIMO Wi-Fi antennas with 802.11ac Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.1. First, let's get to the unboxing of the Nexus Player, which comes shrink-wrapped in plastic. Now, once we remove the sleeve, you'll find a white box with a faint letter P embossed on the top for player. This packaging is similar to the Nexus 6 and Nexus 9 boxes. Now, lift the lid and you'll find your hockey puck-style Nexus Player, which is wrapped in plenty of plastic. First, let's remove the strip of plastic surrounding the glossy edge of the player, and then we can remove the sheet of plastic cover the top surface of the player which features the Nexus branding. We have another piece of plastic covering our recessed ports on the back which peels away easily. The player resembles a lot of other set-top boxes and is similar in size, although the round shape is certainly distinctive. All players have a matte finish on the top with their respective branding along with a glossy black edge. The player has recessed ports which does a nice job managing cables plugged into it so they line up neatly behind the player when it's connected. Now in terms of ports we have our power supply, micro USB port and HDMI. Some of the other players offer Ethernet and optical audio output but the player keeps it much simpler. On the bottom of the player we'll find a rubber pad with a Bluetooth pairing button at the center and a white LED status light which reflects off the shelf it's resting on, which is a little less distracting than the bright LED on the face of the player. Below the player we'll find a quick start guide which reveals just how easy this thing is to connect and set up and of course we'll go through part of that in this video. Below the tray we'll find our voice powered remote controller wrapped in plastic. Once removed from the packaging we can see it's a very compact and lightweight controller with a matte plastic finish. It's definitely not the sturdiest feeling remote controller out there but it's comfortable to handle and easy to use. At the bottom we have our Nexus branding and farther up we have our buttons which partly resemble Android buttons from a phone. So you'll find your back button, home button, and a play pause button instead of an options button. We also have a directional d-pad with a center click and at the top we'll find our voice button with a microphone just above that which also acts as an LED status light. Now we'll need to dig a little farther to find our batteries for the remote control which is tucked under the tray along with our power adapter and more paperwork. So the power adapter is also wrapped in plastic and once removed we can see our ASUS branding along the side. Down below we'll find our AAA batteries for the remote controller. Installing the batteries actually involves sliding the battery compartment on the back of the remote. Although this can be a little finicky to get off and slide back into place but once it's there it's pretty secure. Now this remote connects via Bluetooth instead of infrared or Wi-Fi direct. Now onto the gamepad, this is also a Bluetooth device that retails for $39 and resembles most console game controllers. This also duplicates most of the controls on the standard remote, with the exception of voice control. Inside the box we'll find the remote covered in a styrofoam envelope. Pulling that out reveals a set of AA batteries toward the bottom. Also at the bottom of the box we'll find a paperwork packet which explains how to set this controller up and the names of each of the buttons which you'll have to memorize. Getting back to the controller, we'll find a familiar overall design with a glossy finish with matte textures. We have lots of plastic covering the glossy surfaces and shoulder buttons to remove before we can get started. First thing I'm going to do here is install the batteries, which load into a carriage at the bottom of the remote control and snap into place really easily. The remote has many of the classic gamepad controls with a left and right analog stick, D-pad on the left, and function buttons on the right, with our power button toward the center and back and home buttons on either side. We also have our shoulder buttons at the top and spring-loaded trigger buttons at the back for variable control. Overall, the gamepad has a nice quality feel to it, although the springs in the trigger kind of feel a little cheap. So let's plug in the Android player and set it up for the first time. Now the Android player is capable of 1080p HD video at 60Hz and supports 5.1 digital audio over HDMI. So it's right up there with other players in this segment. Although I'm connecting this to a 4K TV, this player doesn't actually support 4K, but it will work with 1080p just fine. Now our first order of business is to pair our remote control, which you can do by holding down the back and home buttons at the same time. 
Next, we need to select our Wi-Fi network and enter in our password using the on-screen keyboard and remote. Now, the first thing it will need to do is update to the latest software and reboot. Now, once that's done, we need to log into our Google account. Now, you can do this with the on-screen keyboard, but I find it's easier to do this from a website on a computer, tablet, or phone. So the player will direct you to a website to log in and activate your player with the supplied code. Once that's done, you'll need to agree to a few more things and you're ready to start using your Nexus player. All right, so let's walk through the user interface, which is pretty intuitive. So you can see up top, we have our search options, which we can click on and search. So if I click here, what's the weather like tomorrow in Rochester Hills? Tomorrow's forecast for Rochester Hills is 46 degrees with a chance of showers. Alternatively, I could also hit the voice button on the remote control. How tall is the Empire State Building? The Empire State Building is 1,250 feet tall. Now you can see the interface is adapted to the TV. So when I scroll down here, I can get to YouTube videos on the Empire State Building. Now if I want to go back, I just hit the home button or I can hit the back button. So let's hit the home button. It takes you back to the home screen. Now I can also click on this search option and just click over to the right to use the keyboard to enter my search. Now you can also use the remote control app on your Android phone, which I'll take a look at in just a moment. Now you can do quite a few other things with voice search. So you can say, Show me movies with Patrick Stewart. So there we go. We have all of our movies, which come up pretty quickly here. So I can select Star Trek First Contact. I can watch the YouTube trailer and I can rent it or purchase it from Google's Play Store. So you can see I can play the trailer, buy it, rent it, or add it to my wish list. And I can scroll down here to see other related movies. You can also do things like Galaxy Note for unboxing on YouTube. So there we go. I find my video right away. I can click on it and start watching it. As you can see here, I also have my media controls here, which I can bring up by hitting the pause button. I can also toggle to the left and right side to fast forward or skip ahead. I can flag the item. I can enable closed captioning and I can see suggestions related to this video. Now I can also do things like open Netflix. So it launches the Netflix app. And of course this works with all the other apps. Now, of course I could also do music play Coldplay. Now, if I hit the back button, it actually takes me to several options to play back this music. So for example, I could play it in Play Music or on YouTube. So again, select Play Music, it launches that app and searches Play Music for Coldplay. Now, these are all my albums. So this is stuff I own, so I can select my own music here and play it. So I can pause it, play it, skip ahead or skip back. I can also rate it and I can create a new radio station. I can shuffle it or repeat it. And if I scroll down here, you can see the entire tracks of this album. Now the top row here is full of recommendations as well as what you've recently watched. So right now you can see Star Trek Into Darkness and X-Men. Those are two movies I recently watched. So those are up front here. So if you want to resume it, just click on it. It takes you right back to it. Now, one of the neat things here is that you can pause playback and you get these info cards. So if you scroll down here, you can see it's found the faces in the scene here and identified them. So you can see Zachary Quinto, Carl Urban, and Chris Pine, who was just in the previous shot. So if you want to find out more about this actor, just scroll down, select Zachary Quinto, does a Google search here, and there you go. You get Zachary Quinto and the movies he's been in and items on YouTube and also related searches. Now, the only problem I'm finding is that if you want to go back to the movie, it doesn't resume. So right now, I think that's a bug in the system. Them, but you hit the home button, takes you back, and you can go ahead and select the movie and resume it where you last left off. Now, if you're watching the movie and you hit the home button, it brings up the home screen without stopping playback, which is very nice. And you can continue scrolling around and selecting other content if you want. Now, they make scrubbing this movie pretty easy. All you have to do is swipe over to the right here and keep clicking to the right to scrub all the way up to 16x speed. And then when you're done, just swipe over to the left on the play button and it resumes automatically. So again, a really nice, quick, smooth operating system. Now, of course, you can also scroll down to your apps here and go to movies and TVs on Google Play. You can go to YouTube, the Google Play Store, music on Google Play, Netflix, Hulu, games on Google Play, and Songza. So all of these came pre-installed. All I have to do is log in. Now, we can also go to movies and TVs to see what's available here. So you can see my library. So these are purchases I've made from either in movies or TV shows and things I've put on my wish list. So I can select my movies and see the ones that are available to me. Now we can continue scrolling through this left column to see new movie releases, Disney movies recommended for you, Jump Street's back, and some other, I guess, promoted content. New plus notable TV shows, family night deals, heartwarming deals, etc. So you can see lots and lots of options. We have top movies here, and you can select any one of them. So for example, if you want X-Men, if we select this, you should get options for rental and purchase as well. 
So you can see I can play the trailer here. I can buy it for $12.99 or rent it for $4.99 or just add it to my wish list. Now we also have our movie and TV genres and I really like the design of these icons which pick up on the material design theme of Android 5.0 here. So you can see lots of selections here from drama to family to horror, independent, Indian cinema, music, sci-fi, fantasy, short film, sports, world cinema. And of course those also apply to TV. So of health and fitness, learning and education, reality and sports. Of course, we also have YouTube, and because you've logged in with your Google account, your YouTube account is here as well. So you can see your subscriptions, your uploads, and that sort of thing. So I can see my subscriptions, my uploads, my playlists, my history, uh, watch later, Android topics, and more. So all of these are my subscriptions as well to pick from, which is very nice. And of course, you have your Google Play Store, where you can buy apps that are related to the Android TV platform. So for example, we have our entertainment apps, music apps, TV remote games. So these are games that work with your remote controller. You also have casual games for the gamepad and action games for the gamepad. And we'll demonstrate one of these. And then we have our settings. Now, if you go up to entertainment apps, you can see the selection is pretty thin right now. So you don't see things like HBO Go. Uh, but of course, you have Netflix and Hulu Plus. Uh, you have a few others like Plex and Crackle, Ted, Bloomberg TV and NBA, so a lot more has to be added yet. Um, I'm sure more will be added in the future. Then we have music apps. So we have Vivo, iHeartRadio, Pandora, a few others I'm not familiar with, uh, songs that is included, and then we have TuneIn Radio and TuneIn Radio Pro. So quite a few options. Now, if you want to buy a game, just go ahead and select it here. So we have Modern Combat. So you can purchase it for $6.99. You can see the full description included in your wish list or flag as inappropriate. So let's go ahead and buy this game for $6.99. This will, of course, charge your Google account. So let's go ahead and accept it, buy it, and then we'll have to log in with our account. So I'm going to do that off screen. Now, this is the first purchase I've made on this device that involved my credit card. So now it's asking me if I want to request that a password is always required to make a purchase. I can also ask every 30 minutes or never ask again. And that's what I'm going to do right now. All right, so it's installing right now. If I go to the home screen, you should see a progress indicator down here under game section. You can see it's downloading right now. We also have Google Play Music here. So you can select your Listen Now items or you can go directly to your library. You can see your playlist, which I have not established. You can also go to radio and explore other things to purchase. Now, if you go up to my library here, you can see things I've recently played here. So I can go right to this album and I have several options here. I can shuffle it, I can start radio or go to the artist. So let's click play. Now, of course, I can play, scrub and skip ahead and I can select a track I want from this album. So, for example, let me go to this track right here. So you do get the full album art while your music is playing. If you hit the home button, it takes you back to the home screen, continues playing in the background and you can see your progress indicator on that first item right here. If you want to jump back to it, just click on it. It takes you right back to it. Of course, you can also just pause playback anywhere in the system by using the pause play button on the remote control. Now we have three third-party apps here, Netflix, Hulu Plus, and Songza, and all of them have their own unique interface design. They control it, not Google. We also have Google's Play Games here, so we can see our gaming account here, so you can see our scores and games you played recently. We also have your profile, you have your players, you can find additional games, and you can go to your inbox for messages. All right, so let's go to our settings panel. There's a lot to take a look at here. So we have our network connections here, so you can see exactly what's going on here. You can see Wi-Fi and Ethernet, which is funny because this does not have an Ethernet port. I'm not sure why that's here. You also have Google Cast, so of course this does support Google Cast, so this is a full Chromecast device. Let me go back here and select it again. So this is a full Chromecast device, so it does support Google Cast for uh, broadcasting YouTube or any apps that support it, which works great, and I'll demonstrate that a bit later. And again, you can see the version number, you can share your usage data, and all those other options right here. You have your system sounds, which are basically a quick toggle here, so you can turn that on and off if you don't want to hear the sounds that the system makes while navigating. We also have our apps, and this is where you can uninstall your apps or see your system apps and how much memory they're taking up. So for example, if you want to uninstall songs out here, you can go ahead and either open it, force stop it, uninstall it, and other options. We also have Daydream, which is basically a screensaver, which you can activate or change the activation time. So you can select five minutes all the way up to one hour. And you can select when your device goes to sleep from 30 minutes all the way up to never. We also have storage. Now you do have eight gigs of internal storage here. About 5.8 is available right now, although you have to keep in mind I've downloaded some games and apps and movies here. So some of that is gone. And this is where you can also reset your device for to factory. You have about this device, so you can see your system update here. You can see your device name, so you can rename it if you want. 
You also have your legal information. You have ads, so you can control the ads you receive. You can also see the version of Android you're using. So if you keep clicking that, you can actually get to that little Easter egg that's also available on Android 5.0 devices. Again, just click the center here, it brings up the Lollipop logo. And if you keep clicking it, it brings up this Flappy Bird style game, which is kind of nice. Now, of course, I'm absolutely terrible at this game. It's very frustrating. And then at least I got to one. Let's see if I can get to two. Nope. All right, that's good enough. Now, of course, we have date and time language and our keyboard. Now, under keyboard, we have several options to pick from. So we have the lean back keyboard, which is basically that on-screen keyboard you can manage with your remote control. You also have the Google Japanese input keyboard, and you have your virtual remote keyboard, which works with the app on your phone, which I'll demonstrate. Now, under search, you can, again, associate your Google account like so. It's already here, so I don't have to worry about that. You also have speech, and this is where you can select certain things. So you can select your language here, which again works just like on an Android device. So if you want to select your local language or dialect, you can do so here. And then you have your speech output. So you can turn this off if you want. So if you want no speech output, you can turn that off. And you also have block offensive words, which is on by default. And then we have our accessibility options, which includes closed captioning, uh, speak words off or on, and text-to-speech. Now we also have our remote and accessories. So we have our Nexus remote, which is of course paired when you set up your device and you can add additional accessories like the gamepad. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, the first thing I need to do here is hit the power button on the remote control to put it in pairing mode. All right, so now it sees the Asus gamepad. Let's go and select that and now it's pairing. So as you can see, the Asus gamepad is successfully paired and now I can actually use the gamepad to navigate the system. Now under personal, you have your location information, so you can turn this on and off right now. It's on, so it's using your Wi-Fi to determine your location. You also have security and restriction options here as well. And you can also go to your account to disable it or remove it, or you can choose your synced apps from your account. So you can see your app data, your contacts, play movies and music, and people details. And if you want to enable contacts, just select it, start syncing right away. All right, so let's go and start playing one of our games here using the gamepad. All right, so it's going to tell us how this gaming pad works, and it's pretty similar to any other gaming pad on a console today, so let's go ahead and click continue. Now there is a remote control app for Android. And as you can see, it sees my Nexus player and it will connect to it over Wi-Fi. So now I have a directional D-pad here so I can navigate through my interface and I can use search on this device instead of the remote control. I also have my home and back button. Now more importantly, this gives me access to a keyboard rather than using the on-screen keyboard of the player, which is not as quick. Now I can also select a trackpad layout from up here. So if you just wanna mouse around on the screen with your finger, you could do that as well. Although I find it a little less precise than I'd like to see. All right, so let's try voice search. Open YouTube. So as you can see, it uses the microphone on your device as opposed to the remote control. Now, if you ever navigate away from the remote control, all I have to do is swipe down from the drop-down notification shade, tap on it, it, takes you right back to it. The Nexus Player app also includes a smartwatch companion app for your Android Wear device. So you can remotely control your Android TV with an app on your watch. Now the Nexus Player incorporates all the same functionality of a Chromecast device. So that means cast screen. So for example, in Android 5.0, this is built right in. So I can click cast screen here. It's gonna search for my available devices. So it sees my Nexus Player. It's gonna connect right to it. So over Wi-Fi, I'm wirelessly broadcasting the display of my tablet or my phone right to my television. This also includes audio and it's almost instantaneous. There's very little lag here. So it works really well. It actually works pretty well with games, although it can hiccup here and there, but it's amazingly effective and quick. Now, of course, screen mirroring isn't the best option for media. So one of the things I can do here is select the Nexus player here from the YouTube app, and it will provide a full screen experience on the TV instead of the screen mirroring option. Now, the tablet or phone now acts as a remote control for that media, and I can continue doing other things in the background while this is playing my media. Now, if I want to get back to my media controls, just swipe down from the drop-down notification sheet in the right up top, and I can click pause, or I can tap back up here to get a full screen remote. So in the end, the Android TV is a better version of the Chromecast player. It provides full remote control access with an on-screen interface while still providing the same functionality of a Chromecast player. It's also not terribly expensive at $99, which is comparable to the Apple TV and Amazon Fire TV. And you have a very capable search engine. Now, right now, the Nexus player doesn't have a lot of third-party app support, but of course, it is a Chromecast device as well, which means that any app that supports Chromecast also supports the player. So you pretty much have 
have a large selection of apps to pick from, including HBO Go. Now the interface is really quick, smooth, and intuitive, and really nice to look at. They've done a really good job here. This is definitely my favorite interface of any set-top box right now. And of course, unlike with the Chromecast or the Apple TV or the Roku player, this device offers Android gaming, which is quite nice, especially with this gaming pad. I'm pretty impressed by the gaming pad. It's right up there in terms of quality with the Xbox One and PS4 game pads. So I'm pretty impressed overall, especially for 40 bucks. So in the end, if you're an Android or Google user, this is finally the device that brings it all together on your TV. So that's going to do for me in this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.